Okay, cool. Right. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, this is our first ever partner Pilates session, which is quite exciting. Um, so before we actually get stuck into things, some of you might be thinking what on earth is partner Pilates and hate to disappoint or maybe even settle a little bit of anxiety. Um, but Lisa, Lisa and I are not going to be pulling any strenuous moves today. Um, partner Pilates is essentially a session in which we at Airship and Toggle invite one of our partners and we sit down and walk you through our integration and how to best use it or just kind of a few tips and tricks of kind of how we think the integration should be used. Um, so you might be an observer or a mutual client or an avid yogi Pilates person. Again, apologies if so. Um, but we essentially just want to give a little bit of inspo um, and yeah, just hopefully just a few tips and tricks for you to strengthen your marketing if you're using both platforms. Um, and just, yeah, to put a little bit of a spotlight on how great our partnership is with Feed It Back. And yeah, and we also just love a cheesy concept, at Airship and Toggle. I'm sure you're all aware if you see us on LinkedIn. But yeah, cool. Um, so just to kind of, you know, say a little bit more about us on the call. Now we've introduced the concept. Um, we're going to introduce ourselves. So I'm Bryony. I'm the Partnerships Manager here at Airship and Toggle. And my role is very much nurturing the relationships we have with our partners. Um, and we work really closely with Feed It Back. Um, and yeah, just making sure that everything is running smoothly, mutual clients are happy, and that we're just doing cool things like this together. Um, Lisa, I'll hand over to you. Thanks. So I am Lisa. I'm the Head of Client Services at Feed It Back. Um, currently sat in a very sunny Bristol, which is why I'm kind of a dark blob on your screen. So apologies. Um, but ultimately, I'm lucky enough to manage uh, a lot of clients across Feed It Back myself personally, but also supporting the team in managing our wider client base as well. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm Lucy, um, Head of Sales at Airship and Toggle. Um, I'm based in South East, no, South London. I was going to say the wrong part of London then. I'm definitely <laughs> South London. Um, and I generally look after um, bringing on board all of the lovely new business that we do. Um, working alongside my team with Holly and Tess and Sam Brown, which I'm sure many of you know. Um, and yeah, we, we absolutely love it. We love working with hospitality, um, strengthening what we do in terms of the platform and just really listening to what our customers need. Um, so you'll hopefully see a bit of that during this webinar. Cool. Thank you. Um, so to explain a little bit more of the structure of today's call, um, very similar to a workout class, we're going to be having a warm up, a workout and then a cool down. Um, the actual workout itself will be split into three segments. So we're kind of looking at them from a um, beginner, intermediate and advanced level, because um, we appreciate that, you know, a few people on this call will be at completely different levels or will know one platform more than the other or just have kind of um, more simple or basic knowledge. So we're going to hopefully take it through that. And then, oh, one second. There we go. Cool. So to break that down in a little bit more detail. So we have beginner, um, which is just the no brainer. You know, what everyone should be doing with the integration. Super simple stuff. And then we then have intermediate. So still keeping things pretty simple, but just something that is, is a little bit more creative um, that might require just that extra bit of bandwidth and then kind of then finalizing with advanced. So just a nod to the best or more flashy way of our integration, um, which also includes a little sneak peek. Um, but before we kind of get stuck into that, we're just going to give a really quick overview of each platform. So Lisa will kind of go through Feed It Back. Lucy can go through Airship and Toggle. I'm sure all of you guys are somewhat familiar with all of them, but it's just more so so we can kind of give that overview and just introduce it. Cool. Brilliant. OK, so um, for those of you that might not know Feed It Back, I don't think that's many of you, um, but Feed It Back is a business full of ex-operators, if I'm completely honest, and we work solely within the hospitality industry. Um, we like to say that we are obsessed with detail and ultimately, as you can see here with all the different platforms, we wrap up your customer experience 
um, from an array of platforms into our easy to navigate dashboard, which is accessible and customized to the uh, different people within your business and the different areas that they work across. Cool, thank you. Lovely. Um, okay, so moving on to Airship. So we're a data-driven loyalty platform, or you might want to call us a, a hospitality CRM platform. And essentially what we do is we store all of that great data that Feed It Back share with us as, alongside your uh, Wi-Fi partner, your bookings, photo booth, room stay, loyalty voucher, ordering, literally the list goes on. Um, and we just pull that all into one place so you can consolidate a really simple uh, customer view of all of the customers you have. Um, but we have something called visit data, or you might want to call it POP, which is short for proof of presence. And this is where you can really change from your database being more 2D to more 3D. Um, and essentially, you know, audience segmentation is a big part of this, but it will help you then personalize the way that you communicate with your customers in the future through things like behavior triggered customer journeys um, and loads of other stuff that we do with our customers. Um, I do think a key thing that we do um, is our integrations, which is obviously why we're here today. Um, so we work with about 72 different integrated partners on Airship, and we know that that is exactly what makes the platform what it is, um, because it's what gives us all the amazing data that we can play with. Cool. Thank you. And then on to Toggle. And then on to Toggle, yeah. So Toggle is like the younger, fun sister. Um, so our team built Toggle really to be the gifting platform for hospitality. Um, and since then, in 2018, we've kind of branched out into some additional features like selling experiences. You can sell tickets, you can sell merchandise. Um, you can also set up a referral campaign. And obviously you've got the physical and the digital side of gift cards as well. Um, this can be sold both on a fully customized web shop, web shop um, but also in venue as well. So you can really capitalize on, on how much sales and um, engagement you can have through this prepaid revenue. Um, but Toggle is also mobile first. So as you can see on the little scrolling GIF there, that's what it looks like on a mobile. And we're compatible with like Apple Pay, Google Pay, as well as the wallet. So you've just got a really simplified purchasing experience online. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. Um, so now that we've had a little bit of an overview of both platforms, we just wanted to include uh, essentially just an example of what that customer journey could look like. So this is a little bit of a butterfly or dom domino effect. There's kind of no clear cut way of, of doing it. There's so many different directions that you could kind of take this. Um, but following a visit or a guest dining or just generally someone popping into the venue, um, how do you want to communicate with them following that? So are you welcoming them and bringing them on a journey to build a loyal customer with more personalized comms over time as you build an idea of their dining, spending or behavioral patterns? And then, oh, sorry, one second, I'm just letting people in. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so how are you welcoming them? What journey are you then taking them on? Um, and are you incentivizing customers within this journey as well? So are you segmenting your customers and giving them different incentives or just talking to them differently depending on their demographics? Um, or are you just speaking to all of your customers in the same way? Or alternatively, are you taking someone who isn't necessarily a promoter of your business on a journey to essentially just build that trust and brand engagement from the get-go? Um, so yeah, this is just a really simple kind of look at how that could potentially look like. Um, and like I say, there's so many different directions that this could go. There's so many different, um, you know, birthdays or uh, retention emails, etc. Um, but hopefully that serves as a little bit of a good example. And yeah, we'll kind of get stuck into the workout now and start with beginner. There we go. Brilliant. So thank you. This is um, for me to cover with you all today. Um, so the team have actually already touched on um, the amazing array of integrations that they've got. And if I'm completely honest, it's one of the many reasons that Feed It Back, we love working with Airship so much, um, is because of that. It enables our client base to ultimately drive feedback from multiple streams, from booking systems to Wi-Fi, order pay, um, even photo booths. So um, for us, it's crucial that operators are able to capture feedback from multiple sources. 
of the guest journey. And it's not only um, because it boosts the volume, as we can see these incredible volumes here for our client A and our client B, but it also enables us to understand the impact of the different uh, customer journeys and what they can ultimately have on a customer's experience. So with Feedbacks customizable surveys, you can tailor these questions dependent on the source that is coming into Airship. Um, it can also obviously tailor location, menu offering, just to kind of name a few, but it gives you this insight into that customer journey. Um, and we can see here from some incredible numbers with emails being sent to what that is with an open rate um, and how that ultimately reflects in the surveys completed by those customers. So client A, for example, here has a massive array of survey responses that have been completed. And it is for me to be honest with you all and say that this client doesn't just capture them from post visit emails. They are capturing live within the venue as well across tablets. Um, but to put into perspective with client B, who is solely feedback driven by the team at Airship here from all of the different sources that they're bringing that in from, we see a 15 and a half percent response rate converted into that into those surveys, which is incredible, um, as generally we kind of aim to see an average of between eight and 16 percent for our clients. Um, and, and, in, and in terms of kind of the additional bonuses that people see, as you can see with client A, there's a fantastic number of uh, sign-ups that also come off the back of feedback where people are signing up to the mailing list, which is additional information that then goes into the system with the team at Airship, passed across with our integrations and helps you start to build that um, data set of your client base. Um, and just to kind of note with client B, there's is so small as that was literally only switched on two weeks ago. <laughs> um, so just in case you wonder whether there was something there. Um, but no, it is it gives us an opportunity from a kind of beginner's format to just start feeding that integration to deliver that insight of your customer and to deliver you then the additional insight that you can get from feed it back with that tailored uh, customer response. Wonderful. Thank you. And then kind of them from that beginner. So this is what we like to think is like, this is how everyone is using the integration. And this is the most simple kind of way of using the integration um, with some very impressive numbers. Um, and then kind of moving then into intermediate. Um, this requires just a little bit more bandwidth, but it's something that we think is really cool and can just drive, you know, a completely different subset of revenue. Um, but yeah, I will let Lucy explain that. <laughs> Thank you, and thanks for that, Lisa. Um, so obviously we've collected all that really valuable data um, through that post-visit feedback. And now what you wanna do is really use that feedback that we've gathered about your guests um, to determine your next move. Um, so with that, you've got the ability to target based on your feedback sentiment. So when I say feedback sentiment, we segment all of that feedback based on whether it's positive, which might be an NPS score of say eight to 10, um, You've then got your neutral, which is anything from sort of seven to four, maybe. Uh, and then anything below four is what we could we segment as negative feedback. And with that information, uh, you can then hopefully um, really target on sh people sharing those positive reviews. Um, so we've got a little example here of um, Feeling Squid's email, which is really lovely. And they essentially just suppress everyone who has um, shared a neutral or negative um, review or feedback. And they just target those people that have actually sent through positive feedback with a really simple email saying, you know, thank you so much for your support. We love hearing these great words. How do you feel about sharing that on Google or TripAdvisor or you know, insert any other platform you use? Um, and um, it's another really great way of them getting more positive feedback on wider platforms. We've also recently, I say recently, it's probably a while ago now, but Rose's time, we did a case study with Feed It Back um, where they actually increased their Google reviews by 400% um, in quite a short period of time as well. And that was actually doing something very similar to this. So why not share? Um, the other things you can do as well is with that, you can incentivize that sharing or incentivize more feedback through the use of issuing a toggle voucher, which is super easy to do as part of a, a full journey, automated. Um, or you've also got to consider the fact that you might have some customers, and hopefully this never happens to anyone, um, but that don't give a positive review. And therefore you wanna actually do a little bit more around guest recovery. Um, and again, really, really simple and very similar process, but you'll use the suppression tools to essentially um, contact people that have given a lower NPS score. 
um, and perhaps position that more as a, you know, sorry, you haven't had a great time the first round. Here's a gift card, expires in seven days. You can set an expiry to encourage that engagement to be as soon as possible. Um, and you can actually then track whether or not that's been redeemed, whether it's been utilized. Um, but also something that me and Lisa were speaking about the other day was um, quite often operators might have open complaints when things have been really bad. Um, and therefore you probably don't wanna poke the bear when things like that are happening. So you can actually suppress perhaps for like 30 days, 60 days, however long that, that complaint might be open for. Um, so you're making sure you're communicating with customers at the right time. And as I say, not poking the bear. <laughs> it's also worth noting there that the um, guest recovery with the amazing team at Toggle, the integration is live into feed it back that you can actually link that with your case management. So when you're communicating with your customers, and for example, it's um, it's actually kind of like a tailored guest recovery amount um, based on their experience. You can send those immediately via the system as well, um, linked up into that kind of follow up of the email for them. Yeah, great point. So um, talking of leading very nicely from kind of MPS and what gets sent to the team and how you can segment that. Um, actually, we obviously send over an awful lot of data between feed it back and Airship for the uh, for the customer base that is completed with on the feedback. Um, and one of the key things that you can do with that MPS um, data is you can also um, utilize that as we can see here to look at the visit frequency, um, why your customer base might be visiting as these questions are very often asked within our customers surveys as an extension to that kind of core demographic data. Um, and as you can see here, that for example, in this instance for this client, their first time visits are actually one of their lowest scoring groups and quite significantly kind of 20 MPS points lower than those that are really loyal visiting weekly and so forth. Um, so you could take this opportunity where you look at this customer base and you really want to understand where you can drive football and ultimately understand how we can push certain segments um, to converting these customers to more loyal customers. So as Lucy touched on with a welcome email, for example, or a alternatively an incentive for those new signups that we could pretty much presume are also your new visits um, we can ultimately then drive them into the venue again to have another experience and hopefully convert these people into more loyal customers and by using also the toggle vouchers as an addition to those um, you can obviously track the success rate of that how often these people do come back and then inevitably understanding whether they do convert into that loyal customer um, as we can see here that from a feedback perspective it's so much more obvious that those that buy into your brand and are loyal to you are ultimately the ones delivering that kind of those core MPS scores that we want to do. Um, and as some of our customers have also used, looking at the kind of visit purpose, it's understanding, well, actually, is there an area that we really want to focus on? And again, with footfall, it's particularly low area. So actually, there's a real kind of focus for the operators within the business there to drive that key area and, and boost those scores. So there's multiple ways that you can look at that data. Wonderful. Thank you. And then moving on to advanced. So this is our little sneak peek, actually. So the uh, team are working very hard between both parties on being able to deliver dish level feedback um, for your customers. So ultimately, to kind of put into perspective how that will work is some of you um, may have experienced this where you have ultimately completed a survey and it actually knows exactly what you have eaten and drank while you have visited that business, um, which is an amazing, amazing touch. And it also delivers, if I'm completely honest, a much higher response rate of dish insight feedback from a feedback back customer perspective. So what this will enable is the team at Airship will be sending their post-visit emails as usual, like they do with yourselves, but ultimately they will then be able to also link that with transactional data that might be provided from your order and pay or your EPOS. And that will be linked with the feed it back survey that will go out to your customers. And for example, um, it will then say, Lisa, would you like to leave us some feedback? And within my survey process, it will know that I had specifically ordered the uh, burrito followed by a lovely pina colada cocktail, for example. So it gives me an opportunity to deliver that tailored feedback. And for those of you that might not be necessarily using the Dish Insights at the moment, there's some really core cool ways that you can ultimately capture some additions around that to whether your guests are happy, unhappy, whether it focuses on portion size, 
um, whether it's particular locations that are unfortunately not cooking the dish correctly. And actually, there's a kind of core focus there for people to go to. So this is an amazing advancement for both parties to be able to deliver this to our customer base. Massively. And just kind of adding on to that as well. So this is the first integration that Airship will have within this kind of category, um, especially segmenting that feedback back into the CRM. And timeline wise, so we are looking to kind of launch this beginning of May. So we have a beta client that we're going live with kind of mid April, but hope, yeah, thankfully, you know, you guys on the call probably won't have too long to wait until this is ready to use. Um, so all going well, beginning of May. Um, but yeah, it's very cool, very exciting. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. And then kind of easing now into um, the cool down. Um, so hopefully those kind of three steps were, you know, useful or beneficial in any way. But before we kind of actually get into, you know, maybe how to implement those things or kind of next steps, um, I'm going to kind of open the floor a little bit here and just ask if anyone's got any questions on any of those three points. We can have a little bit of an open chat about them if need be, um, or we can just take it after the webinar. It's completely fine. Um, I always appreciate it. it's a little bit awkward opening the floor on these things. No. Okay. I was feeling shy. Oh, we've just given them so much information. There are no questions. There are no questions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, go with, <laughs> Let's go with that. Yeah, definitely. Okay, wonderful. Um, so kind of really simple in terms of actually getting the ball rolling for these things. So if we are looking at more of the beginner steps, um, I'm sure a lot of you already are aware, but um, on Airship, we have an academy, which essentially is, I like to refer to it as like an encyclopedia of all of our integrations, but we have a document outlining, outlining all kind of three parts to this. So we have kind of um, a document for sentiment feedback and then what to then do with that. We have uh, an integration guide for feedback and airship. So essentially what data is being pulled, how to set that up, who to talk to internally on both sides to get that going. Um, and then also connecting feedback and toggle. So a setup guide and what to do and, and how to do it. Um, so really simple stuff. And yeah, it's just kind of our way of just making sure that everything's on paper just to make it as easy as possible. Um, and then following that, if, you know, a few more of the kind of advanced steps, so the intermediate or the voucher issuance, et cetera, um, if there is anything that you would like to speak to us about, you can either contact us at the support uh, emails and each account will have an account manager that we can kind of talk you through that. Um, but if you are looking to kind of segment or to do more flashy things with journeys per se, um, and Lucy, I'll kind of let you explain this in a little bit more detail, but we also do have airship journeys, which could be a good solution for that. Yeah, definitely. So um, some of you might already know if you follow us on LinkedIn or obviously if you're a customer, you might receive some information about it. But Airship and Toggle have recently launched boosters. Um, and just to explain what boosters are, uh, they're recently, I'm oh, sorry, they're really simple, but really powerful add ons um, to essentially supercharge the way that you use the platform. And um, so a good example for what we've been speaking about today around journeys and setting up these automations is our journey booster. Um, and essentially, this is where our expert customer success team who use the platform every single day, um, they collate all that amazing content from you and they essentially transform it into your desired welcome journey, birthday journey, retention journey, pop journey, anything like what we've spoken about with the feedback emails um, just so you can gain the best outcome from that. Um, it's a really simple service you can add on, we do all the legwork and you can come to us and refresh and change or update all those automations pretty much whenever you want. Um, so it's totally optional, but what we have seen customers that have um, added this on have really maximized on the return on investment potential um, with our support, which we completely appreciate. Not every team has multiple marketeers available and the resource might be a bit slim. Um, so if that's the case for you, you might want to have a chat with us and see if there's something we can do. Wonderful. Thank you. And that was pretty much everything. I mean, if there's been anything that we've spoken about, um, whether it be any of those steps or kind of the up and coming integration that you would like to learn a little bit more about, you can contact us directly here. 
Um, and just a few things kind of following this as well. Um, like I say, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We'll be sending um, the recording and also kind of a, a little bit of a step-by-step -step on all three of those points to everyone that registered. Um, and that is kind of everything. Thank you so much for joining us. We really hope that's been um, beneficial or even just as a nice refresher on the integration. And yeah, thank you so much, Lucy and Lisa, for helping us put this together. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Oh, wonderful. Well, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And like I say, if anyone does have any questions, feel free to use this uh, as an opportunity. And if not, then feel free to dip out and have a lovely day. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you.